the first live stream uh, for Silk Pro Art for Happiness. My name is Mila Lansdowne and I have a, a wonderful creative photographer here, Trent, helping me to get this to you lovely people. And uh, I want to talk today about how to make money with fun and creative activity, which is silk painting for me. Why silk painting? Silk painting is uh, versatile. You can uh, create a silk scarf or you can have a nice picture or you can create a um, greeting card, home decor, it's so versatile. So my message to you is, if you feel creative, if you have time at home, you can monetize that time with easy to learn skills that will then help you to grow. And today it's the introduction about how to monetize, understanding what it means. It is not today, it's not a workshop how to paint on silk. The first question is, if you are watching, tell us where you are from, because we are here in uh, Northern uh, BC, British Columbia, Canada, in the frozen north, and the creative north, and um, the opportunities for silk painting and artists, they, they vary. And uh, what I can talk about is my experience here in Canada. I can talk a little bit about my experience in Germany, which is where I started with silk painting. But if you are living in a different country, you need to then think about your options. It's about understanding how to monetize hobby, let's say silk painting, or how you can monetize your time by learning. Very easy method that creates intriguing, beautiful designs that you can then use for variety of products. First thing I want to show you is this picture. This is silk painting framed picture. And it was done in the same technique that I am teaching children in the schools or seniors groups. And today you will have a little download about step-by-step -step, um, process how you can create something like, I will take this one, something like this is um, it's just piece of silk in so-called random design. This is where you can go with it, but you don't need to. You can just learn how to play with silk, create scarves, and you are set every time. But you need to know where the money comes from, how you monetize it, how you price it, and how you position yourself. It is more than just uh, being on Facebook or any social media and shoot a picture and post it there. This picture I'm, I'm keeping, I'm not selling it because it's bringing me money by creating products from that image. And uh, that's, this is something, the next level of learning. First, you need to master the skill or learn the skill, the basic skill. These two images here. And again, this one, a child can do. Uh, I'm teaching silk painting to, uh, you know, children of, uh, of age of six, eight, 10, uh, so, or seniors, 90, 90 years old. So everyone can do this, you can do this. And this would be the embellishment, but today we will be not talking about it, we are not talking about techniques, but this is the process 
on the painting original, saying this is for two days retreat. Uh, it is easy to paint, but it takes time. To create a piece like this, you need at least six hours in the day, or better, two days. So this is what I, what I do here in my studio. People are coming in for a retreat, which is basically a stress relief. It's a creative relaxation. Uh, everyone is happy, and everyone is excited about what is coming through their hands. There is a Kindle book that I wrote 2014. It's it's long time already published. Still, still, everything what is in there is valid information. It gets you the entire process. Uh, it's my story by not knowing anything about silk painting to learning about sales channels, about pricing, about uh, product development. Everything is in there, including the manual instructions. From my experience, there are three ways how to make money from silk painting. The first thing, and I have a nice slide here later on, I'll tell you more about it. Uh, the first is, yes, you paint your scarves, you paint originals. That's number one. The second option is you are taking a picture of the image that you are creating and put it on products. It could be mouse pads, it could be greeting cards, bookmarks, you name it. So reproductions are the second option. And I see them as semi-passive income because you paint your scarf or the wall picture that I showed you, you take a photograph of it and then you let reproduce. And chicks are coming to your home because if you have greeting cards in the galleries or gift shops, you bring them there once and then they are selling for you. So I see it as a semi-passive income. You can sell in gift shops, you can sell in consignment, which I not really suggest, but it's a good starting point. Or you can sell them online on different platform or your online store. And uh, the peak, as I see it in my work, is just selling your skills. Once you learn and master even this basic technique, and you are well established, you have nice presence, you develop yourself to a professional silk painter. Then you can share your skill. You can invite people for a retreat, the same way I do it. Or you can go to different clubs, seniors clubs, um, recreations, uh, resorts, um, women group, you name it. You can do parties. This way, for me, it's the most fun. You sell your skill. Uh, it's basically effortless because you just instruct and people are doing the work. But it's deeply rewarded and it's deeply profitable. For example, I the originals, you have here listed uh, and you can see it on your, on your screen. Of course, the scarves and shawls, clothing, ties, eyeglasses, there are really nice things, jewelry, pillows, curtain, table rentals, wall banners, uh, I have a couple hanging here, or frame pictures, the one you've seen, or matted originals, and, um, and corporate gifts. Originals as a corporate gift are similar to the retreats, very profitable because you create samples, you, you propose to the company, they pick what they want to have, they pay 50% down, and you go and produce. This is one of the most profitable and uh, calculated a way to generate income. Here with corporate gifts, I would say that you also need to 
be well established because to create corporate gifts, uh, let's say um, I did for uh, Women Enterprise Center, so you get, uh, let's say, 60, 100 um, scarves to, to create and everything is hand painted. That means you would need to uh, hire a helper and there is more organization to it, so you need more experience. Here uh, are the reproductions and uh, basically the list is endless. Um, greeting cards, uh, prints, prints, frames, matted bookmarks, art books, journals, pens, postcards, mugs, keychains, totes, uh, shirts, um, or license your design or POD or silk scarf printed. So for example, the printed silk scarf, we have a couple Canadian companies, startups, that uh, would take your original and, well, you will give them the design and they will reproduce it on silk. So what is POD? Oh, print on demand. That means you send your, you take image, let's say I would take image of this uh, image um, framed picture that you've seen at the beginning and then let's say uh, send it to Fine Arts America and it's sitting there and the companies who owns, they, will, they are selling and you are getting uh, royalties for that. So that's for example. And it works for different t-shirts and, and scarves and you name it. The, the third way is the, uh, selling the skill. What I was saying before, but you can sell, sell online, you can sell online lessons, you can do workshops, you can do weekly, you can have your studio set up and have somebody come in, in every week, let's say for uh, eight sessions. Then uh, you can do workshop retreats, courses and community center, summer camps. I did several of those because the silk painting that I'm teaching is such easy way to do and we will do a little, little run through here. Uh, you will see how, how easy that is, how playful that is, how exciting that is. That, you know, doing summer camp for children is something very wonderful because you see the excitement uh, that the children then experience. So the other thing will be then, uh, you know, um, going to in uh, different organizations, specific groups, teaching online courses, and write or sell instruction. The same way what I did here. I just wrote down, I, I had a blog, I wrote a blog where it's a step-by-step -step how to start and develop silk scarf business. And now it is on Kindle, as I said, I think it was published 2014. So it's now eight years and uh, yeah, and it's dripping money, right? I see there are three levels uh, to it. And see, this is what the people see. This is the product that is out there. This is, and I'm calling it packaging, but in packaging, uh, I understand are you retailing? Are you going in wholesale? Are you selling in consignment? How you reach the market? Promotion, partners. I would like to just uh, put your attention to the description in the YouTube, and I think it's on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm putting out interest list for silk club, for people who really want to grow as silk painters, growing revenue, but also create joint ventures. Because right now, groups and communities have the power. If you are in a group with the same direction of intention and with a mindset that together we are stronger, then you are supporting the other and are supported. So this is one way how to go to partners, but of course you can, you can uh, be in societies, in organizations, with galleries, and so on. So you need partners, and then the promotion goes with it.
this is the foundation this is you and and I think uh, that's a part where we need to do a big work because we often jeopardize our work by feeling not worthy by seeing the mistakes that are in the self by looking at the competition more than we look at being the best uh, of who we are so this is the foundation you need to have in in order to build a revenue from silk painting or income or career you really need start with self-discipline you need to as well start to build a confidence and the best way you build confidence is when you are out there, when you hear what people are saying about, when, when you get the compliments and people are saying, oh, this is beautiful, and where are you? And then you are selling. So you build up the confidence. Um, of course, by, by growing your skills, your capabilities, moving, improving, you know, improving your skill, there is this loop competence and confidence right when you become more competent you become more confident and that goes this way so then support system it could be in personal or it can be in professional circles you need that and a service mindset christmas season uh, in the mind of a silk painter from my experience for me it starts in august in August, I am creating my scarf. I create a concept. I think about what do I need to order. I'm thinking about packaging. I'm thinking about promotion. I'm, I'm booking my shows. I'm getting ready starting August, September, ready for marketing. And then I am ready now. How you approach your success? You need to have a plan. And once you establish it, once you have, you know, your list, your, uh, your inventories, your organizations, you are set. The next year is much easier. What I'm, what I'm saying to you, my students, and I'm saying that to you, if you are going out the first time to present your silk collection, it is about gaining information. Every venue has their own audience you will you will see when you are setting up your table or your booth is the vibe in that center or in that building what you like who is coming there the people will ask you question but it's about you asking them find out who is this person are they buying for themselves are they buying for for a gift what purpose is behind it and think this is service mindset. Think how you can help them. The more you know about your client, the better you are next time at that venue. Every venue will give you different feedback. So then the next year, you can decide and say, okay, what, uh, what was selling there was very good. I need more of it. What was selling on the other side, uh, I wasn't so happy about it. I may not book there next year. So first time going out to trade shows, make sure that you bring home information and start to create something that is called in marketing the customer avatar. Who is your best client? Are these males, females, how old they are, uh, for whom they are buying it, what what they like about your work what they are saying think always about the next sale so if somebody is purchasing your scarf you may give them a little coupon for the next time or to give it to a friend so always think that way and we still have email and email is, is still the queen and king of uh, communication because it's yours. If you collect email addresses from your clients or from the visitors at your craft show, then you already have somebody who showed interest in your work. 
and if you have email list next time you can send them a little note i am there on there and i have some special for you communication connection cooperation think always about the next sale so if somebody is purchasing your scarf you may give them a little coupon for the next time or to give it to a friend so always think that way and we still have email and email is, is still the queen and king of uh, communication because it's yours if you collect email addresses from your clients or from the visitors at your craft show then you already have somebody who showed interest in your work and if you have email list next time you can send them a little note i am there on there and i have some special for you communication connection cooperation who are just starting with sock painting or even just thinking about sock painting I would like to just go for a little review what you would need and it is not much so of course you will need a piece of silk right there are different types but it's a hundred percent silk in this case and uh, the the most used is so-called china silk or habotai so you will need a silk then you will need some paints. Um, little note on that. This is Mila teaching silk painting and I am using silk paints, which are heat set, ironing. But there also are dyes, steam set. I'm not teaching those and I'm not using them. So remember this, if you are new to silk painting, there's a difference. Silk paints, silk dyes. Silk paints, they stay on the surface and we are using iron basically to glue the paint to the silk. So let me set up just a sample workstation. What I teach and what I use. It will be larger in, uh, when, we, when we do it in, in real life. But I have a table and I have a tablecloth, something that protects and uh, is water resistant. Then the next thing that I'm taking is a newspaper. And uh, you don't need to worry about what's uh, on sale. And uh, the newspaper that I'm using is here to absorb the moisture. Uh, there are different ways to do this. This is my method. And uh, you can investigate a little bit, find what works best for you. Then what I need, I'm taking two paints and I have my two brushes. And what else? Oh, we need silk. All right. So let me walk over. What I have here is I just took a little piece of this silk tore it apart and I rinse it in a water and leave it quite wet and if you need to carry it over a room I'm I'm using tea towel squeeze it a little bit but it's really nicely wet and then for our random technique random is means really random so i have a wet piece of silk and then i will just arrange it the only thing that i'm looking for is to have all these wrinkles on top i don't want to have this this way i want to have the silk nicely with the top side showing to me and wrinkles right I have these two paints here. There are Yavana, but um, Marabu or Pebeo silk always look for paint, right? So iron fixed. So I shake it a little bit to get the pigments running nicely. And 
then I have I'm keeping one brush per one color and usually I mark my brushes so I so I know so I can use let's say purple all the time I will put a little sticker on it purple and then there is the other one is orange so and in this case I will just take this utility brush uh, put it in my jar and I apply this paint and uh, you know I can or you can think what, what you want I could go around it and have the center and and uh, in the purple or I can mix it up so in my case I will mix it up to get these wrinkles nicely so I get pattern like this you can see there are like leafy pattern beautiful this is exactly how it was created a random design and uh, I can show you then tomorrow when it dries how it looks like but today I just want to show you how simple and easy that thing is anyone can do this anyone can start to generate income with silk scarves that are so unique because you cannot do these uh, wrinkles or folding the silk second time the same way. It's impossible. It is always very unique and original. So this is the first part. Now, if you would be here for a retreat, you need to dry it. And there are two ways. The best way, and that's why I usually do it in, in August, the best way it is I would take the silk, I will have a whole bunch of them, 